Whether you're a solo traveler or a big group that wants to go somewhere rich in culture but low in cost, Mexico City is the place for you. After my six day trip, this video has all the tea on what to do, where to stay, where to eat, and some important tips for your time in the city, starting with where to stay. My group was mixed gender, so we stayed in this Airbnb in Roma Sur, a 10 minute drive to the trendy Roma Norte where we spent a lot of time. It was about $200 a person for five nights, which is an amazing deal, and there's tons of gorgeous Airbnbs in Mexico City, so absolutely look into that first. If you're a woman traveling solo, however, you may want to ensure there's safety wherever you go, and I loved our area, but I was also with three large men, so I felt safe wherever I was going. So other places I'd look into staying if you don't want to stay here or if you're um, feeling, you know, you want to feel safer are Roma Norte and Condesa, which are the wealthier areas of the city, pretty trendy. They're often compared to like Soho, as well as Coyacan, which is a stunning historical center of the city where the Frida Kahlo Museum is. If you want to be bougie, however, places like the Four Seasons are only $200 to $300 um, USD per night. So you can look into those as well if you want to splurge. There's no shortage of things to do in Mexico City, so whether you're a culture, food, or fashion lover, you will have something you want to do. Before we get started though, you should know that you should absolutely carry cash and pesos, not USD, but pesos, and don't expect anyone to speak English wherever you go. You or someone in your group should be able to make reservations, ask how much things are, and the like when you are in Mexico City. But we started off with the Museum of Anthropology, which is a world-renowned museum in a very beautiful modern building that had exhibits dedicated to evolution, the history of Mexico, the Aztecs, Mayans, etc. Entry was about 80 pesos, which is very affordable, and it's a great place to get a baseline about the city before continuing on. Plus, the gift shop was incredible. Then we popped over to the Castle de Chapultepec, which is a stunning castle where Spanish colonizers lived in Mexico City. It had the best views we had ever seen, as well as more historical context, and I really wish we got there earlier so that we could explore it more, but we only had about 30 minutes before it closed. Speaking of that, you want to try and buy tickets online for a lot of these museums, but some of the websites are a bit wonky, so you're going to want to get there early. Plus, all museums are closed on Mondays, so you definitely want to plan accordingly. The Frida Kahlo Museum, also known as Casa Azul or the Blue House, is an absolutely necessary and super cool experience in Mexico City. You can buy tickets online and it's a house, so it's only about a 30 minute to an hour excursion. And truthfully, it doesn't go into too much detail about her life or her experiences. I was on Wikipedia the whole time, but it was absolutely a cool experience and the surrounding neighborhood was one of my favorites. So if you love Frida Kahlo and you feel like you have to visit, you definitely should. Plus, it's a great photo opportunity. Another thing to do is flea markets. There's tons of flea markets all the time in Mexico City, but the ones that were the best for us were happening on the weekends, obviously. This is one um, with a ton of food that was happening just right outside of our Airbnb. And there's also a huge one every Sunday that I will link where it is in the city below that has everything from you from furniture to decor to food to silver. It's absolutely incredible and you definitely need to take advantage if you're someone who's super interested in decor or anything. So bring room in your suitcase when you come to Mexico City. Next, something we did was check out the fun vintage shops in Roma Norte. None of my friends actually ended up buying anything because it's very expensive in, um, in Mexico to go vintage shopping. I'm talking $90 for a t-shirt. Like, uh, what is going on there? That's It's like definitely makes a lot of sense. You have to import and all that stuff. So just be aware of that. Either way, it's super cool to walk around. Nonetheless, we also stumbled upon the super cool modern bookstore and walking around the area just was super fun. Next up, let's talk day trips. There's plenty that you can take in Mexico City, and we decided on two, Xocomilco and Teotihuacan. 
The boat trips were the absolute highlight of our experience. We found out about this while we were talking to some locals. And basically online, we booked a boat for three hours for around $115 USD. And once we got, we just had to call them and tell them that we were coming about 30 minutes before. They had a boat ready for us. We hopped on and we had the time of our lives, honestly. So we were able to bring our own food and drink on board but there was also tons of little merchants who were selling everything from food and drink to jewelry to tons of stuff while we were outside so absolutely take advantage of this it was so fun you can go with your friends you could bring people who you met there like we went through this gorgeous area looked at all the canals had a mariachi band sing to us it was actually one of my favorite days ever Another day trip that you can and should take is Teotihuacan, which is the pyramids that are located about an hour and a half outside of the city. On both of these trips, we took Ubers, but there was public transportation available. But Uber is very cheap in Mexico City, so you can really do anything you want like for a pretty low price compared to somewhere like New York City. The history of these pyramids is incredibly interesting. Um, these were built between 0 and 500 AD 20 centuries ago. So you absolutely need to check it out and learn more about it for yourself. It was such a wonderful experience. So let's talk food. Where should you eat in Mexico City? There's so many places and there's so many places that I really wish that I could have gone while I was there But we just didn't plan accordingly because we were such a big group and the first and one of my top 10 dinner Experiences was Blanco Colima We went here after it being recommended by a few people on Instagram and had the best time um, The croquettes I still am dreaming about them. We got the salted fish. It wasn't necessarily worth it But the appetizers here were incredible as were the drinks Another really cool place that we stopped by that was absolutely delicious, it's called Vajo, Mexico. It's not a particularly like famous restaurant or anything, but while we were out, we met some locals who recommended it to us. And it's just this guy and this woman who basically have a restaurant in their house that they are giving, that they basically cook in their front yard. And we come in and we have a private dinner at this large 20 person dining table. And they had tons and tons of incredible food. So so I had the best time there. It was private. It was lovely. We get to learn their stories. DM them on Instagram if you want to stop by. We also stopped by a ton of rooftops. There's a lot of rooftop culture in Mexico City, but the by far best food that we had while we were there is street tacos and street food. It is literally top 10 things I've ever eaten. Um, one thing to do is really just while you're out, get recommendations from people who you meet. Um, don't be afraid to strike up a conversation with someone who's near you. Um, another bar we enjoyed was La Clandestine. Basically everywhere that we went and enjoyed, I will have links down below. Uh, but if you are looking to go out, two places I would recommend are Departamentos. And if it's Sunday while you're there, Sunday to Sunday, which is a day party that goes from like 3 p.m. to 11, because most things are closed on Sundays. Mexico City is also known for having two of the top 50 restaurants in the world, Pujol and Quintanil. We went to Pujol's lunch restaurant um, and honestly, it was not it. We did want to get a reservation at Pujol, but it was not possible. So we went to Quintonil, which is a stunning, stunning restaurant with one Michelin star. We each did the tasting menu and got 10 courses as well as drinks a la carte because we heard that the wine pairings were not very good. And I'm still dreaming about it. It was so incredible. All right, some final recommendations while we enjoy these wonderful views of my margaritas are do not drink the tap water. It's not safe. And I was extra safe and brushed my teeth with bottled water, but very important to remember. 
Don't be stingy, especially if you're American. Tip well and be kind to people and try your best to speak Spanish. Don't go without data and talk text. I may be bougie for this, but it was really important for me and calming to have a Google search just to speak in the way. Do learn a bit of Spanish before. I am an ignorant American who did not do that and I felt very stupid the whole time, so you absolutely need to do that. Do some day trips. They're only an hour away and they're absolutely worth it. Five days in Mexico City is the sweet spot, but be sure to build in some time when you get there because it's a very packed trip. Meet locals, download the city maps, and you can check out my full guide and what we did all six days down below in my Notion doc, as well as the Google Maps that where I saved all the places that I wish we went and all the places we went. Have a wonderful day and follow me on Instagram for more. Enjoy your trip to Mexico City.